So as part of my efforts to self-teach computer science, I recently started teaching myself linear algebra, which is highly used in AI and machine learning, which is a branch of computer science, which I really want to get into. So I was extremely excited to start learning linear algebra, but somehow I just couldn't get myself motivated. Sometimes when I'm learning new things, I just can't get myself to do it. I don't know why I'm not as excited about this as I initially was. So I started pondering and wondering what really is it? That, that there really, there must be something else going on apart from just wanting the end result and just wanting to learn. So I started researching and thinking about the things that I've done in the past learning other branches of computer science where I had actually been really motivated to learn throughout the whole thing. So throughout my research and my thinking, I came upon a realization that a lot of the times when I'm learning something new, I'm sort of doing it in a completely wrong order, which led me to a whole new study method and a whole new approach to learning new concepts that I'm now going to start applying to everything I'm learning in my life. So first we're going to talk about why I wasn't able to learn linear algebra and what I figured out that I was doing wrong. And then we're going to talk about a couple of examples where I've sort of by accident been approaching it the right way and why that actually helped me master these new concepts much more efficiently. And then we will bring these two together to talk about exactly what this means for you and how you can use these methods to probably learn things much, much faster and be much, much more motivated than you've been in the past. So when I started learning and getting into linear algebra, sort of the way I was approaching it is how most people approach learning new things, which is with a perspective of finding the broadest research and learning all the different things about this topic as sort of deeply as possible to give you the best foundation to master this new concept. On the surface, sounds really reasonable, right? So I started watching these videos, learning all these things about what vectors are, how matrices relate to them and how they're like linear transformations of space. Like for example, matrix multiplication. Like once you learn how to do it, it's like, it's pretty cool to sort of transforming space and all that, but it's just like, but why? And this is the same thing that's happened to me time and time again in my life when I've been learning new skills. For example, when I was learning a new language, and while I really, actually, really, really wanted to learn Russian, I really wanted to be able to speak it, whenever we were in class, the things that we were learning, like these word lists and like these grammatical topics and stuff, just I just couldn't get excited enough about it to actually master these things. And I feel like a really important thing in learning is to actually be excited about the process, to actually want to learn the things that you're learning. You can get to a certain point without being super excited, but if you really, really want to master something, you really, really want to become good at something, it's super important to actually enjoy the process. So there was clearly something wrong with this process that I was approaching linear algebra or learning Russian at school or many other topics that I've learned throughout my life that weren't allowing me to be excited enough about this process to actually master it. So I thought to myself that there has to be something that can be done about this. That there has to be a different approach, essentially. So this approach that I've been describing to you is what's called bottom-up learning. What bottom-up learning means that you start with the constituent parts of the system that you're trying to learn. In this case, I guess linear algebra, but more broadly, the reason why I want to learn linear algebra is so that I can learn machine learning and artificial intelligence. What most people would prescribe as a great way to learn artificial intelligence is first you need to learn this math, you need to learn linear algebra, then you need to know calculus and all these other branches of math that you need to know how all of these work in a theoretical basis. And then once you have all of these pieces together, you understand all this theory and all these details behind what machine learning and AI actually is, then you can apply all of this knowledge and actually make something, use it, create something practical. All of this, probably how you've learned most things that you're learning in your life, you always start from the theory. And it seems so incredibly intuitive. But it turns out that according to neuroscience, this is not necessarily the best way. Instead of this bottom-up approach, what I wanna propose is to completely flip your approach and instead think about what is called top-down learning. And to understand this, I'm gonna give you another example. When I was starting to learn graph theory, a really important part of computer science and software engineering, I just couldn't really wrap my head around what is the purpose of all of this? It's cool, but why are we doing it? Until I started coming upon the actual practical applications of graph theory. Namely, I started learning about Google's PageRank algorithm, which is essentially the algorithm based on which the Google search algorithm works. They use this really complex PageRank algorithm where essentially web pages are ranked according to how many other pages link to it. So essentially how many other nodes in a graph link 
to that node, which is the web page. And that is how pages are actually ranked on Google. And this is a really great and a really practical application of graph theory. And when I started learning this practical application is finally when all these theoretical things that I've been learning before sort of started clicking and I started understanding, okay, I actually see why this is useful. Another example is how like Google Maps work. All of these graph algorithms and these graph theory concepts that you would learn in the textbook are actually applied in there. But it's not until I started learning about these practical applications that I actually started understanding why we're even learning these theoretical concepts. And that was the key to actually get me excited about graph theory. So if I would start over, if I would start again, learning graph theory from scratch, what I would do instead of going into a textbook to learn about the theoretical concepts is just going directly into trying to understand these practical applications, because that would then make me understand why we would even want to learn it. And then I would go and learn about the theory and it would actually make sense to me why we are even learning this theory in the first place. And this is what the top down approach is really all about is starting from the practical, sort of learning the bare minimum of the theory, just so that you can understand the practical applications that you're trying to either build or just understand. And then later on, you go in to learn the underlying theory behind it, because then you have an understanding of the context and it makes sense to you why you're even learning that theoretical concept. I hope this is making sense to you. By the way, if you're finding this interesting so far, definitely hit the like button down below. My big belief is that the biggest reason why people fail to learn coding and computer science is not that they don't have the right resources or that they don't have the right courses, is that they don't have the right strategies, the right mindsets, and the right study methods to actually stick to learning and to actually learning to code efficiently. I believe I know how to do all these things because I'm really interested in like the human brain and how it works and all of that. So that is why on this channel, I mainly focus on giving you my strategies, tools, and methods for learning to code efficiently. So if you're new here and this sounds like something that you might want to learn, definitely consider subscribing. But now back to the story. So I figured out that perhaps the best way to approach learning is actually to ignore the theory, ignore all of it in the beginning completely and instead just dive right into trying to understand practical applications. And in the topic of coding as well, when I started learning to code, I actually took this Coursera course on like the programming languages or like the theory of programming languages, differences between different programming languages. And it never really clicked because I never really understood why we are even learning about all of these things. None of these things were intuitive to me. I didn't understand why they were important. So that felt like a very useless course to me until much later and I had already been coding for a very long time. I had coded a bunch of different programs on my own and I understood the sort of problems and the sort of dilemmas that would come to me time and time again when I was doing my own projects. That is actually when I understood, okay, this is actually the thing that they were talking about in that theoretical goal. So this actually make, maybe actually makes sense to think about this and to figure out how to fix these things. Yeah, it actually makes sense to actually think about how I am designing my code and how I'm packaging it. But the key here was that I first needed to understand through practice why these things are important before I could even appreciate the theory behind the solutions and the, the famous algorithms and all of that that people always talk about. So I looked into a lot of the science on this and I don't think it's completely conclusive yet, but I would bet like, at least for me, maybe you're different, but at least for me, the top down approach of going practical first, theory second, seems to be much, much superior. The way we're wired, is that if there's a lion right there, I should probably know how to run so that I don't get eaten by the lion and die. So essentially our brains want to learn things and to expend resources and neurons on learning things that are actually useful for it, that are useful for our survival that's going to help us in our lives. You know, learning something theoretical where you can't see the connection to reality, it's difficult for your brain to understand why you're trying to expend these neurons to like learn these things. So it's sort of gonna resist it. As I said, on this channel, I talk about the strategies, tools, and methods teach you how to code the most efficiently and how you can sort of hack your brain to learn things much faster than most other people. If that excites you, I would highly recommend you that you watch this video where I talk about one of the other big hacks that I've discovered to learn to code much faster than most people. And in general, if you wanna see a lot of videos like this, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.